Hello again, PJ Barnes for Video Classics, and welcome to Toronto, Canada in December 1995, during the final week of operation of Toronto's wonderful old PCC streetcars, which have graced our roadways for almost 60 years. In fact, Toronto boasted one of the largest PCC fleets in North America, with a total of 745 cars being acquired over the years. The decision to retire the remaining cars came suddenly in November, with no warning given until the announcement made on the Monday morning of the final week, on December 4th. Thankfully, the Commission decided to run cars on three routes during the entire week, with two cars on Dundas, two on Carleton, and two on King, so that the public would be able to say goodbye to these faithful workhorses. In addition, a farewell parade was planned for the final day, December 8th. We begin our coverage by riding all three lines. We will start here at the east end of the Carlton line at the Main Street subway station on the Bloor Danforth subway line. We begin by traveling south on Main Street. Next, we head west on Girard. At Coxwell, we turn south for a few blocks. Next, we again head west, as Girard Street continues. Toronto is well known for its cosmopolitan nature and variety of interesting neighborhoods. Just check out the storefronts as we head downtown.
needless to say, we were not alone in our quest to capture the final days of the PCCs on video. Next stop, Chinatown. Actually, just one of many Chinese areas in Toronto. This one at Girard and Broadview. Great dim sum can be found at this corner. Next, we cross the Don River Valley. I came here in 53, and I believe they were in service then. Yeah. I heard something in the 40s, but I'm not sure exactly uh, when these... I like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Got their own style. At Parliament Street, we jog north for a few blocks, then turn west on Carlton. Next, we pass through the center of town at Young Street, where Carlton becomes College Street. Here we pass Queen's Park, the seat of Ontario's provincial government, and then we skirt the south end of the University of Toronto campus. As you've probably noticed by now, we are using shots of various streetcars to assemble our journey around town. I hope you don't mind too much. And now for a bit of history. In the late 1920s, many North American cities banded together to develop a new type of streetcar to meet the increasing competition from the now mass-produced automobile. The presidents of these many electric railway companies formed the President's Conference Committee, the PCC, 
to undertake this task, and by the mid-1930s, two prototypes were completed and tested in Brooklyn, New York. The cars were a great success, and in 1936, Brooklyn ordered the first 100 PCC cars, which were greeted with great enthusiasm by the public. Here, just west of Lansdowne Avenue, College Street ends at Dundas Street West, and for several blocks we travel along Dundas before turning onto Howard Park Avenue and continuing to the loop at High Park, where our driver will top up his supply of sand and free up the flow to the rails. Using the buttons on this box, the driver can communicate with transit control, advising of various load and emergency conditions, as well as receiving instructions, such as rerouting or short turning orders. Directly ahead, a small NA sign above the tracks indicates necessary action, which means we must operate the approaching switch by remote control to return to College Street. There. Okay. And if I want to drop sand on the rail, the rail is slippery, I have yeah. this button up, you can right. clicking, and that's dropping sand on each track, each rail. So what it does, it gives me the, the, uh, the grit there so I can stop. You know, sometimes the rail gets very greasy. If you don't have that, you just keep on sliding. 
Next, we pass the home of the Toronto Maple Leaf hockey team. An inspector joins us on our return trip. We'll leave the car at Broadview and take a look around. Both the King and Dundas cars run along Broadview to reach the Danforth subway at the east end of their runs, so all PCCs pass through this corner. Here we see a King car heading south. As Broadview runs right along the edge of the Don Valley, past Riverdale Park, it's a great spot to watch streetcars. So we'll stay here for a while before taking another ride. Now for a little more history. Impressed by the success of the PCCs in Brooklyn, Toronto placed the largest PCC order to date in 1938 for 140 cars. These were air electric cars with many critical systems such as brakes and doors operated by compressed air. The cars were a big hit in Toronto as well. Unfortunately as these new cars arrived many of the Toronto Railway Company's old wooden cars were retired from service.
This was a sunny but bitterly cold day, and the wind was howling down the Don Valley. So we do hear the wind a bit on some of these shots. Now we'll follow these cars up to the subway station and take a ride on a Dundas car. Before we depart, we'll take a quick look at some more of the controls. travel south along the park, past Girard, and then head into town west along Dundas. Once again we approach Young Street 
and the Eaton Center, a major tourist attraction for shoppers. Looking south, we can see the towers of Toronto's new City Hall. Here we see the Art Gallery of Ontario. And here we pass through the heart of Chinatown. Okay, well, shooting down the aisles. Now back to the history books. The commission wanted to order more PCCs to augment their original fleet of 140 cars. But these plans were delayed by the war transit controller during the Second World War. Finally, in 1946, another 100 cars were ordered. And these became the 4300 series cars. This time the cars were all electric with no compressed air systems. As we approach Lansdowne, our driver informs us that he has been running late all morning and that his car will be short turning in order to catch up. Accordingly, we transfer to a new CLRV for the ride into the Dundas West station. Both the Dundas and King cars turn at Dundas West, so we'll wait there for a King car so that our return journey will be on the King line. Here comes our ride. Thank <laughs> you. 
now he heads south on Ronson's Vales to King. At the foot of Ronson's Vales, we're in sight of Lake Ontario. And east on King we go. Next, we'll do a little pacing. And if you listen carefully, you may hear me whispering instructions to driver John Hodgson. And what would a drive through downtown be without a sampling of rush hour traffic? Once again, we're nearing the center of town. A great place to catch a show or maybe grab a bite to eat. Next, we pass the University subway line.
Hey, pay attention to yesterday's classics. Mix 99.9, new from my brilliant beast, the Fall Away. And they'll be opening up for Junk House at least Palace December 16th. Adam Ant and the title track from Wonderful. 151 with Julie James. The Mix and Miss Your Felix and Mr. Norton want to bring two people home for the holidays. Fax Rob Christie at 872-9999 or drop off your letter at any Mr. Felix and Mr. Norton location. Something spectacular is happening at the Princess of Wales Theatre. It's the Canadian premiere production of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. I want it, in the green, it has critics and audiences cheering. It was the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Very entertaining. You have to see it. It's so amazing. As we approach the Don Valley, King Street merges with Queen. And at the next corner, we turn north again onto Broadview. And we end our ride at the Broadview subway station. We'll end the day with a few more scenes at Riverdale Park.
By the end of the 1940s, traffic on the Bloor streetcar line had become extremely heavy. Accordingly, in 1949, another 100 cars were ordered, but these were altered so that they could be operated in sets. These multiple unit, or MU cars, were the 4400 series. for something completely different. A bit of track work in the beaches area of Toronto, in Toronto's East End. After the old spacing rods are removed, new ones are installed using a gauge laid across the tracks. In the 1950s, the Commission wanted to order 100 more cars, but they found that prices had skyrocketed since their last order. Accordingly, only 50 cars of Spartan construction were ordered. These were the 4500 series and entered service in 1951. They were primarily used on the St. Clair Division until it closed in 1956. Fortunately, in the 50s, the second-hand market for PCCs opened up, and many cars became available at great prices. Toronto's first-used cars came from Cincinnati, a combination of electrics and air electrics, which became cars 4550 
to 4601. All of these were rebuilt by the commission. The Commission's next used cars came from Birmingham and Cleveland. These cars too were shopped and converted to MUs. In 1957, the last used cars were purchased from Kansas City. At this time, the remaining large Peter Witt cars were retired, but the remaining small Wits remained in service until 1963. In this segment, we'll see the TTC's rail grinding cars. These cars were rebuilt by the Commission in the early 80s from former Cleveland cars 4631 and 4668, and they remain in service today. Once again, we're on Queen Street East in the beaches.
way back in the 80s, there were still many PCCs on the Queen Line, and we were fortunate to have taken some winter shots the day after a major snowfall. With the opening of the University Subway in 1963 and the Bloor Line in 1966, many less streetcars were required. The Air Electrics were the first to go, with 140 being sold to Egypt. Unfortunately, the Israelis bombed the crap out of them in 1966. By 1972, all of the Air Electrics had disappeared. Next, we see a road salter at work. Here we see some activity at the Russell Car House on Queen Street East.
again this was one cold and windy day damp too and you can hear the wind a howling in some of these shots And a final shot from the rear of the car house before heading to the Don Valley Bridge. We end this segment with some snow melting at a switch on the CN line that runs along the Don Valley. December 8, 1996, the final day of operation of the PCCs, and we're back at the Russell Car House, where our farewell parade will begin. Two cars will run along Queen to the Ronsons Vales Car House in the west end of Toronto. The parade is about to begin, so let's zip up and go outside. Yep. 
take the classic car. And also, don't take it. You better get on or there ain't going to be a seat. Hug, hug, hug! Yay! Let's take a look inside the car before it fills up. Next, the lead car pulls ahead to make room for car number two. And away we go. In the late 1970s, the TTC decided to rebuild many of the Toronto PCCs. They took the best of the 4300, 4400, and 4500 series cars and rebuilt them as the 4600 series. The remaining cars from these series were gradually retired as the new CLRVs began to arrive. Here the cars arrive at Parliament Street. Next, the cars cross one of only three Grand Unions in Toronto, at Spadina. Cars can turn in any direction at this junction. And once again, we're at the foot of Ronson's Vales, where King and Queen Streets meet. After a brief stop at the Ronson's Fails car house, the cars will return to Russell along King.
keep that distance. And here we are back at the Russell Car House. In our final segment, we put together bits and pieces that we didn't use in creating our ride segments, plus other footage from years gone by. And you may have noticed a little electrical buzzing on some of our shots. With the strength of those electrical fields in the big city, even the sophisticated shielding on our cameras can't keep it all out.
find your car here. Yeah. He's there. In the late 80s, the Commission made plans to open its first new line in decades, the Harbor Front Line. 18 PCCs were rebuilt and repainted in 1950s colors of maroon and cream to operate on this line. The line opened in 1990, and the PCCs ran on it until the fall of 1994, when they were replaced with CLRVs. The remaining PCCs were still used in rush hour service until the end. Fortunately, two cars, number 4500 and 4549, will be preserved by the Commission in their original 1951 appearance and used for excursion and charter service. The final PCC to run was number 4611. It left Main Station at 8.36 p.m. on its final run to Ronson's Fales Car House, where riders debarked at 9.40 p.m. December 8, 1995. And special thanks to our transit guru, Larry Partridge, who was on that final ride, for most of the information imparted on this tape, and to historian and journalist Mike Filey for additional information. And we can't forget the many helpful TTC drivers who assisted us, and our own driver, John Hodgson, who made it possible to get those great pacing shots. Some of the following scenes were taken from our video on Toronto's Peter Witt cars, which preceded the PCCs. Here we see one of two PCCs that were painted in the new TTC colors in the 1980s, but they were eventually returned to their 1950s livery.
And as a final thought, consider this. The original PCCs cost $21,500 each in 1938. The new CLRVs cost $500,000 in 1979. 
and the articulated cars ordered in 1988 cost about three million per car. Wow! Hello again. I hope you enjoyed the tape. Now please stay tuned for previews of our other videos.